Legacy Model VP. Naku, lakad mo. Lakad mo na lang. Lakad mo na to. A highly versatile counter for the phases void, but in exchange for that, lock themselves in a very specific timing and just not hitting the poison nova onto enough people frequently enough. That is cool. I think high risk position ones are just so damn popular because, like, high risk, high reward isn't all that high risk anymore if everyone is doing it now, is it? retarded they make me feel the more I love a player it's simple as well Rubik goes down over the top lane yeah I should probably pay more attention to this top lane you're supposed to be like committing your resources to is kind of left uncontested right Skyref goes down again and now I know to keep my camera on the top lane because this is where all the kills are happening but this is not where all the And yeah, these are the kills I ended up missing, except like the earlier ones, they actually happened while he was here. Freaking here or here. Taken down, his wings broken with the ice shard. And Fortune Soul. He's just kinda waiting that Lina can go. Down in Chronosphere is really easy. Well, I think TZ Sven has a word to say about that. And finally, the Rubik is gonna rotate to help keep enabling this Lina. Beautifully played TZ. He'll be caught in the return, but Lina, Lina, she is. Invoker trying to set up a little fight, but fight. Mostly it's gonna be Skyrim Mage suffering and a beautiful poison Nova. As Molasses last word on the surf can help in the team fight. And by that time Void will be online. Like you got the Beastmaster in a position to make space. So Lina either needs to be so far ahead that you can just kill through the space making Beastmaster as well. On the bottom lane, a one man Kronos being died. This is so cheesy, I love it. Roshan versus the creeps, but now Tsukimoto goes on down and with that the fight is about to kick on off as the avalanche toss combo is kinda quintessential for a Neon and the dragon being locked into the pit with Rose with 250 gold just giving away Venomance dice so that Rubik is And Aegis will get claimed by the Lina, oh my god. Neon, I think they may have over-cheesed this Rose a little bit, because now the Chrono finally comes out. But Beastmaster is already dead, and the Skyrim Mage wasn't able to do damage to the Chronosphere. Yeah, hit the initiation with the Overlord. It is gonna be huge. Down goes the bottom tier 1 tower, and to follow that up, Skyrim is gonna go down as well. This time around, the Mystic player actually wasn't that huge. Out comes the three-man Chrono though, one of them dead, two of them dead, and now can they get the Lina the first time? Yes, they can. The second may be a bit more difficult, but everyone is waiting for the crucial respawn time. Lina immediately BKBing, and Neon realized, okay, we gotta play this very carefully. One man Chrono's here on the top, but I think Fortune Soul, he is totally happy with taking a kill and blessing. And they try to deward with the molasses poison wards and they do finally get the observer immediately go on in onto the Skyrim mage, making sure to get him down. As now Sven jumps on the void, but a perfect BKB coming out from Fortune Soul. Beastmaster in the back, stopping them in their tracks, molasses. Where's your dad? That's just Really hard to catch, and it's also really hard for the players to respond, of course, because people just die too fast. The same can be said about that Rubik death, as now everyone from Neon is all of a sudden here. And now what? Like, for Neon's usual playstyle, this was quite chill, you know? This was quite methodical, and this methodical approach is gonna lead to another insta kill on the Lina. One minute, no Lina, now spent. Oh, if only he had a shard. I think it would matter so freaking much because a six armor, six armor is ridiculous when south. And I, don't get me wrong, the positioning is hard. 
but once again Lina just takes so much damage during the Chronosphere. This time around isn't quite gonna die though. Sven, at least he got the regular War Cry off without the shard and no answer for it, no dispel or whatever. Scarab Mage now takes on out with a little bit of help from the Blessing securing him with the Ice Shard. And Beastmaster, he's got himself a BKB going, but now that the BKB wears out, he's gonna die to a Chronosphere, which Void did get stolen there. Yeah, you see what I mean with Sven being so important for the Xena. Oh my god, the Invoker combo though with a beautiful two-man deafening blast. Sven looking to frontline just to kind of help out his team, but Void comes back in again. He has that Aegis, so he does not mind dying, as long as his team doesn't die after. And, well, Tsukamoto, he is tanky enough to at least keep his fight alive for a second, but then he just gets insta-killed with the Laguna. Wait, was that even a Laguna? Got his Blink Dagger queued up. The literal only item he has is Guardian Greaves, and hey, it's been working for the most part for him. Now, a nice avalanche toss, and look at that! We actually get to see the Mystic, but it seems so freaking impossible to fix this valve to try at least once or twice. Now the Venomancer. Oh, Molasses! He will get a nice Poison Nova onto two, but... Tsukimoto, if he's not that here, then... Yeah, that just means Void now has the opening he was looking for, and... Yeah, see, that's what happens to the Lina if Sven doesn't provide her with a ton of armor. Do you see the difference between Lina literally not dying in the Crones here and getting, like, instant killed? That's what made this draft so hard to execute, too. But hey, sometimes, you know, hard to execute drafts still end up working out. Not against mating. Every time they had a good initiation. It just didn't work out, and then when they didn't get good initiation, your gaming would have to bring on the Shadow Fiend. Oh hell yeah, this is gonna be juicy. Night Stalker, although very high risk, if he just kicks off with a... It is gonna be the... Until one of the two either gets a kill on the other, which almost happened to Blessing there, but he has a fairy fire and everything. They're not gonna take unnecessary risks. Meanwhile, Winter Wyvern Hope. Morph. Now he gets caught. It is the first night. 13 seconds in. And, well, at least the return kill on Marblu is in it. And Fortune Soul, he will get the experience. Dying on a Morph never feels good, ever. Now, Tsukimoto on the top lane has also dropped. And Enryu, he debated going through, but may have dove a bit too deeply. Well, he has a magic. Wand and an enchanted raindrop that should be keeping him else. I know just how cursed that spot is where the windstorm hit, and Pango would have just well sacrificed his ultimate, but probably himself by going for the Rubik. So they will go for the tiny instead. And well, one of the two had to die, and we have the action kicking up over on the bottom lane with Pango here struggling to get the ultimate off. Once again, Blessing finally gets it, but Mars tanks for so much. Get saved by the Winter Wyvern for a moment longer. Pangolier, he has to spend a lot of that Rolling Thunder just for that one kill. But with the Rolling Thunder, it is still so much power coming in all at once that Neon end up just being overwhelmed. Fortune Soul hiding away in the trees, morphing it up. But Shadow Fiend with the Requiem will at least set up the Grimstroke to die. Now, Winter Wyvern is the next one being pursued. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Boom, there it goes. Oh, we have a convergence over into the Grimstroke. Start things off, followed by a jump on the tiny immediately. And this is exactly the angle they were looking for because this time around, Blessing, he is not struggling to get the Rolling Thunder. He is not being stunned up at these heals. No, he is just delivering every single point of damage he has. With the Night Stalker ultimate, they may even be able to chase for more, and they will in the form of that Winter Wyvern. And Marcy looks to jump forward, getting a follow-up kill instead. And Ryu is just gonna get punished though, as they simply 7 and 0, 9 and 9 and 0 or something. Neon, they will try to convert on Molasses. This Night Stalk is tanky, but at least it is not Night, so this is your one chance of killing him instead. So, Marcy. Ryu, and Ryu. 
he knows full well. He is kind of the sacrificial core. Uh, he gets to be as poor and, you know, have a bad game as long as the morphing is fast. Struggle too much or make any major mistakes. It's just that Shadow Fiend hasn't died a single time. He is going 6 and 0. Now, maybe this time around they can kill him the first time and then set up after Night Stalker drops first. And now Shadow Fiend could be in a bit of a precarious position. Though Pangolier is sitting behind him with the Rolling Thunder. Wait. Okay, okay. They were actually waiting with the SFBKB for bait. But just got that as a BKB rewarded with the Wind Ultimate, but there's the Requiem onto three people. TZ, thanks to some beautiful cops, still trying to run out, is gonna die. Morphling, finally able to fight with his team at Fortune Soul. Oops, that's gonna be a Marcy card. BKB proc by Enryu, and they do have to commit a hook shot, but now with the, mar with the Night Stalk. Going into the back lines, Hayden on the Winter Wyvern will at least get an ultimate up on him, but all that does is delay things, and while delaying the enemy can be val valuable, provided you actually, you know, prevent a tower or something from being pushed by delay. Goes on down and so will hate it on that wind wyvern. Piece of gristles shall I waste. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. More Radiant's almost got his BKB. That's gonna be his last shot to uh, to kill up the SF work. And uh oh, Winter Wyvern ultimate. Cancelling the Requiem. Nicely done. Shadow Fiend still very much looking for a big Requiem as Night Stalker kites with the BKB and a, a Stolen Wind Wyvern Ultimate actually first coming out on the Morphling cancelling the Requiem. But I don't think you care about cancelling that Requiem. Morphling is dead. You've got the one person you needed. And GG is called by Neon who realized the kills were their problem. Not having the BKB during that push where the mid Rex fell. That was the issue. And there's a lot of... Mm-hmm.